Zambezi News, where we bring in the news faster than it takes to get rid of two bunging imposters. We bring in the news as factual and indomitable as two veteran newscasters who aren't going anywhere anytime soon. We bring in the news reliable, like an authoritarian yet loving and fatherly ruler. Irreplaceable, irrevocable, undisputable, unperturbable. We put the swag in news wagon. Impeccable, unbreakable, <laughs> impetuous, impetuous. The back straight to your desk like the early boy who gets to the school desk early before the other kids get there later after him. Indivisible, indestructible, immovable, inoculation, innocent, bystander, bilateral, bilingual, bilocal, by decree, for us, by us, fubu. <laughs> So, how do you resist repression and propaganda? Some people decided to write articles, others take to the streets. We decided to take the intellectual route, to take the piss out of the government. Mainly the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, the state-controlled broadcaster. Because in Zimbabwe we like things in ones. One TV channel, one president for life. <laughs> because as bad as shit gets in Zimbabwe, up until 2017, we had some of the top history students in the world. Because unlike in other countries' history classes, like in the US, for example, where you have to learn the names of like 40 former presidents, Kennedy, Reagan, Obama. In Zimbabwe in history class, it was very simple. It was Mugabe, Mugabe, and Mugabe. Our history students would pass with flying colors. So the clip you just saw was from the Mezi News, our satirical show that parodies the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation and how they issue out relentless propaganda. We started back in 2011. We knew for some reason that we wouldn't get onto the national broadcaster, so we'd produce tens of thousands of DVDs. This was pre-social media. Uh, we distributed those DVDs across the country, got overwhelming feedback, apart from one viewer who got back to us and said, I can't believe this is the state of our national broadcaster. I can't believe that ZBC has sunk to these levels. And we kind of turned around and were like, Comrades, we've made it. We can quit now. We've achieved our dream. They think we are ZBC. Now, Zimbabwe's news is five seasons in. Uh, we've been broadcast across Southern Africa. We've reached over 2.2 million households. We've been featured on CNN, The Guardian, BBC, Channel 4 News UK. And when we started, there was no political satire to speak of in 2011 because of fear. But now there's been a rapid expansion of access to mobile broadband internet for young Zimbabweans. So we've actually got 100% teledensity, which means we've got more mobile phones than people. And so based on that, we've started a whole bunch of new shows for the YouTube generation, such as The Week, which is a weekly political roundup of all the burning issues that we distribute exclusively on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and WhatsApp. This is a show that gets us into a lot of trouble, but at the same time reaches a huge youth demographic. We reach uh, around 1.5 million cumulative views on Facebook each year, and our seasons of the week reach around 400,000 young Zimbabwean viewers. Now, I'm sure you're asking, how do you get away with this in Zimbabwe? Well, I'd like to categorically state that in Zimbabwe, we have freedom of expression. We just don't have freedom after expression. <laughs> you never fucking know when the guys in dark glasses will come for you, but they do let you perform. And 2017 was a great example of this. The year started with the city council coming and trying to demolish our offices. By the middle of the year, the police were threatening to ban our Shoko festival that we put on every year because they accused us of performing political comedy. Because one of the comedians, Dr. Keller, had performed a joke saying, as Zimbabweans, we're not ready for our own currency because we don't have a dead president to put on it yet. <laughs> To which the police responded, assassination, assassination. They want to assassinate the president. We're like, well, this is a joke, man. <laughs> By the end of the year, they arrested our Magama TV producer, who produced all our political satire, Martha O'Donovan. 
the state was accusing us of attempting to overthrow a constitutional government, and they proceeded to lock up Martha in a maximum security prison, they raided our offices, confiscated all our laptops. And this was all happening when tanks were rolling into town and a coup was apparently taking place. So, some of us woke up in safe houses the next day, turned on the TV, and we saw a general on TV because the army had taken over ZBC, which was a long time dream of ours at some business, but anyway. And the general is there on TV saying, this is not a coup, this is a military assisted transition. And it's true. I mean, in Zimbabwe, uh, we don't do coups. Uh, we've got some of the most helpful military uh, in the world. Uh, it's more like they kind of assist to help to remind the old guy to leave power because he forgot to. So we're seeing this. We're seeing this on TV, and I kind of turn to our team. I'm like, get in touch with our team. I'm like, you know, comrades, you know that that charge of trying to overthrow a constitutional government from yesterday. I think the military beat us to it. I don't think those charges still stand. So we rushed uh, back and opened our Motorway Public Studios and we shot a new episode of the week called This Is Not A Coup because we wanted to be patriotic and you know, support our, our military. Uh, and so we shot this episode which has become one of our most popular. The comrades would like to apologize for, for not being on your screens for, for some time now. Uh, the police, they confiscated our laptops, so we couldn't uh, broadcast, but I've, I've been reflecting and uh, uh, I would like to apologize to you all. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was ill-advised of us not to, to give you the week. Uh, we, we are still young and, and growing and we learn from our mistakes, so we, we are back on, on, on your screens now. Um, and uh, please also know I haven't been forced or, or coerced to make this statement by any social media users. Uh, I've made it of my own uh, volition. Uh, so uh, we give you the week. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, welcome to the week with me, Comrade Fatso. And this is the week when a coup did not happen. No, this is not a coup. It, this is a coup. You coup, I'm coup. Because I don't want trouble, so we coup. Coup? It's such a Zimbabwean coup though, you know? It's, it's, very polite. it's like you go to private school. It asks you, Mangwanani, Mananthi, did you sleep well? It's also so Zimbabwe because Zimbos go about their business as usual. You get to Even though they are tankers in the street. Hmm? Anytime vendors are there selling the airtime, vendors are selling the right. lights, and dance right. artists are even creating a new rhythm, the cool rhythm. Also, only in Zimbabwe. So we put out that episode, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it did really well. But since then, since the military coup, we've got a new president, Emerson Mnangagwa. Uh, the new dispensation is. It's quite a lot like the old dispensation. Uh, Emerson Nangaba was the vice president of Robert Mugabe. He was, I mean, he was his right-hand man. Uh, they recently started clamping down on activists, uh, and just two weeks ago, uh, they abducted and tortured a very pol uh, popular political satirist, Gornet, who we work with often, uh, and threatened her because of her political satire. I mean, these guys can literally not take a fucking joke. Uh, and the biggest joke was last year, when, uh, when we had the, uh, the national elections, uh, it was an absolute joke. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission uh, actually failed to release the final voters' roll. And the voters' roll they did release had ghost, had ghost voters on it. Because in Zimbabwe, even when you're dead, you vote for ZANU-PF, the ruling party. Our dead people are very, very patriotic. <laughs> And when the results finally came out, even the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission officials couldn't keep a straight face when announcing them. So we shot this little clip on the week. Oh, it's 
favorite. Uzumba Madame Kungwe. Uzumba! Ah! I stay in the need for this one. Huh? Uzumba Madame Kungwe. Three million! Then five thousand. Then five thousand. That's me. Okay. That's me. Oh, MTC Alliance. I times four minus divided by twelve. That's me. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming to this press conference, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Artists, uh, remember Zimbabwe and the Mad Static Guru, the Europa National Anthem. Amen. Thank you. So that gives you uh, an idea of what we do at Magamba TV. Uh, we're going to keep doing what we do. We're going to keep speaking truth to power, keep inspiring young people to believe that they can be part of changing their country, and we'll keep laughing while we do it. Thank you very much. I've been Comrade Pato. I believe that you know he. Um, Where's this question coming from, sir? It sounds like. Never mind. Very interesting. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was the uh, Central Intelligence Organization operative that followed me from Zimbabwe. No, it's just it's just my Ghanaian brother over there. I got worried. Yeah, no, you're fine. And uh, how does that affect moving forward, like with content and so on and so forth? I mean, is there what what happens? Is, is, is there anything in there? Uh, as of this morning, I'm currently unemployed. <laughs> I have I have no no more job uh, and I, I I have to come up with new jokes about our current president. I mean, uh, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do my best. Um, but yeah, no, Gabe is gone. Uh, he passed away uh, this morning, um, and uh, you know, it's uh, I think it's mixed reactions for and mixed feelings for a lot of Zimbabweans. Um, I think you know he started off as a was a great liberation war hero, and he brought independence to Zimbabwe. Uh, but unfortunately, he really became a tyrant as as time went on. Um, but yeah, he's gone, and we're going to have to find some new jokes. And we do, you know, also finally have a second president in Zimbabwe because uh, until 2017, um, I had only had one president my whole life, and I was like 37. So you can piss Mugabe all you like, but that dude has got fucking staying power. You know what I mean? Uh, Central Intelligence of Zimbabwe. Ah, great. They're recruiting white people now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the difficult. I was wondering, so with uh, such strong state control of media, how were you managing to be on television and what were your relations like? Was there a uh, movement to shut you down? Yeah, so, so um, I think, yeah, the way they control the media uh, in Zimbabwe is that you've got um, uh, this, like I was saying, it's not a joke, it's true. We've got one TV station, uh, that, you know, ZBC, which is controlled by the state. Uh, and then you've got radio stations, you've got state radio, and then you've got private radio. But basically all the private radio are, are like owned by like, you know, the Minister of Information or the Deputy Minister of such and such. So that's as independent as our media gets. So um, that's why we, uh, we really focused on a, on a kind of digital strategy uh, over the last few years, basically getting all our content out uh, uh, through social media. Um, Facebook has got, you know, is, is where most Zimbabweans watch their videos, so that's where we share most of our videos. Um, and it's also, it also provides a powerful way to kind of circumvent state censorship. So in Zimbabwe, we distribute online. And then uh, when we're on TV, it's basically through uh, the big satellite channels on the continent, like DSTV, or partnerships we do with like DW in Germany. So we're on TV in other countries, but not, not our own country. Thank you. One last, one, one last question. Um, my question would be, like, what inspires you to keep doing what you're doing? 
in spite of the circumstances that you described, because I come from a very different country. I come from Costa Rica, where basically in real heat is like real heat. Mm -hmm. You describe that there's freedom like that not after speech, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I would I mean I believe strongly on what I do, but I also would think that in those circumstances to describe things that I have only seen, for example, near my country, like in Nicaragua, which is a neighboring country, where for example government has shut down T V stations. Like it shut down T V stations or they even they even cut power to the telephone line so you cannot even broadcast in on Facebook and people are, like end up with, without being able, being able to record some things that are being done to people. So what inspires you like to keep going, well, risking your life? Because those type of things, like people just being captured or being, um, they disappear sometimes. So what inspires you to keep going? I mean, I, 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 think, <coughs> I think one thing, <coughs> I mean, one thing, like I think, pers personally, and I think also amongst the, the you know, uh, the team that we work with, and the King Kandoro is here. He's our Magama TV producer. Um, uh, so I mean, I know with, with with him and our other team members, I think it's uh, from a personal tip. I think it's very cathartic when you're living in in such a crazy political context, and literally, you know, um, your team members are getting arrested, friends are being abducted. Uh, it's very cathartic when you to kind of uh, turn that craziness into into comedy and make light of it. I think it's a great way to kind of also deal with the situation. Uh, I think beyond that, also what inspires us to keep going is 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 the overwhelming feedback um, that you know that we get. Um, the fact that we you know you kind of you walk on the streets and there's so many young people across the country who you know you know come up to us. Uh, and really kind of you know, thank us for what we're doing with the satire and a lot of young Zimbabweans will just come online to watch our show each week to get a sense of what the political news is. So I think that also inspires us to keep going. I think we have one more question, yeah? Um, thanks for your presentation. I'm curious, how do you fund yourself and you know, do you run advertising like when the state controls everything or what do you do? Yeah, so we uh, we run we have quite a diverse funding model. I mean, Magamba TV is a production house within Magamba Network, which is our creative and media organisation. Uh, we run a bunch of we run media initiatives, festivals, creative hubs, uh, publishing platforms, and stuff. Um, so we have quite diverse uh, income streams. On the one hand, we get funding uh, from international foundations. Secondly, we will get uh, corporate sponsorship for certain. Uh, for certain things, and then we also generate our own income. Uh, for our satire shows, it's quite specific. So it's a busy news. We sold the rights to uh, for our last few seasons to DSTV, which is the biggest satellite channel on the continent. Uh, for shows like the week, we don't search for any advertising whatsoever. We don't want any strings attached. Um, so it's not we don't want any corporate support or political support for the week. So we can attack everyone. Great. Thank you very much, Farai. Thank you.